Hello and welcome back. I want to continue our discussion about the worship of the Great War of Babylon and why it happens in our world and how it happens. Now, in my previous video, I said that the way a man worships, whether he will worship the um, Lord of Heaven, the Most High God, and whether he will worship the Goddess, um, it will depend on the matter of discipline and whether he is willing to uh, be under the discipline of the Heavenly Father. But now I want to ask the question and answer the question, why would a man be willing to place himself um, and his children under the discipline of the Heavenly Father? Where we read here in um, Hebrews 12, that the Heavenly Father chastens us. Um, he rebukes and chastens us and scourges every son whom he receives. So why would a man be willing to be chastened of the Lord and disciplined of the Lord so that he may be a son of God? Well, um, the if we continue in Hebrews chapter 12, it actually gives us the answer. The answer is to look at the example of Jacob and Esau, and specifically Esau, who despised his birthright and who sold his birthright. So let us look at Esau and see what we can glean here. It says there in Hebrews 12, it says there from verse 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness sp springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. And then in Genesis 25, we also read the story of how Esau sold his birthright. I don't think I need to read it. Um, most uh, viewers will probably know this. But uh, if you do not, it is in Genesis 25, verse 29 to 34. And you can go and read that um, by yourself or pause the video to read that. But um, I want to point out here that it is written, thus Esau despised his birthright. He sold his birthright and he despised it. And we read elsewhere in scripture that um, God hated Esau, which people find very offensive because they do not understand the spiritual implications of this. Now, this part about the um, birthright and the despising of the birthright and the despising of the discipline of the Heavenly Father explains to us why a man would place himself and his own children under the discipline of the Heavenly Father, which is the more difficult path, the narrow path to walk. Why would a man choose that and not choose the easy and the broad way? And the, um, the part in Hebrews 12 about Esau and in Genesis 25 explains this. The reason a man would be willing to, to submit to the discipline of the heavenly father is because he values his birthright he understands the value of his birthright and therefore he is willing for himself to be disciplined and he also disciplines his children because he realizes that there is great great value in his spiritual inheritance we are told to seek first the kingdom of God and that it is a pearl of great price. And so if we look at our Christian heritage, um, if we do not value it and we despise it like Esau, then we will not be willing 
to um, be subject to the Heavenly Father and his discipline. We also read in Hebrews 12 um, in verse 3 about Jesus and the example he gave us of discipline and submitting himself to the discipline of the Father when he walked this earth. So he is a contrast to Esau, which is called a profane person, a profane person like Esau who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now, if you look what is happening in the world today, you can understand better why God says he hates Esau. If you look, for example, at um, the cancel culture going on in specifically America, but also many parts of the West, you can clearly see that how the youth are despising their Christian inheritance. They despise it and they want to sell it. So that explains to you how the father feels about it. Um, if you are watching my channel, I would imagine you are, you know, also somebody who is grieved in your heart when you see what is going on and how people are just um, turning their back on uh, um, their inheritance, even their cultural inheritance. But the important thing is their spiritual inherit inheritance, Christianity, which they're basically selling also for um, red stuff like Esau. He sold it for, for that red uh, lentil soup. People now sell it for red, uh, red communism um, and socialism. It's the same thing. It's also that red stuff that they want. Now, the reason people do that is because they um, have not, they, they've not been taught by the previous generations to value their spiritual inheritance. And so like Esau was famished when he came from the field from his hunt, in the same way, um, many young people are spiritually famished. There's a spiritual famine for the word, for their parents have not taught them the word. And so they are vulnerable to selling their birthright. It says there in Hebrews 12, for one morsel of food, he sold his birthright. You get many young people now who want to sell um Christianity and exchange it now for this uh, sort of a socialistic system and even some go to the extreme of wanting a universal basic income or a very socialist system whereby um, they give up Christianity for a system that where the government looks after them. So it's selling your Christian heritage just to for carnal fleshly things for for food, um, for material things. And so if you look at it that way, you can perfectly understand why God feels like he does about Esau. It's not about Esau specifically, it's that Esau symbolizes us when we are in that state of mind. And so you can see the worship of the great whore involves uh, a man not being a man. He um, wants everything done for him like a boy that wants his mother to do things for him. And he wants to remain a boy. The children's story, Peter Pan, perfectly illustrate this. Um, and Actually, the another name for the devil is Pan. So Peter Pan didn't want to grow up, you see. And so he um, lived a life where he never grew up. And that is basically why the system of worshipping the great whore involves the, the whore being the god goddess and a, a man being like a devil. Um, who is never mature, whereas Jesus Christ submitted himself to the discipline of his father and 
he um, laid down his life and then he was exalted because the scripture says if we humble ourselves before God in due time, we will be exalted. But Satan, the devil, he exalted himself and therefore you will be humbled. So the system is just the opposite and that's why the world feels upside down at the moment. So we see that um, we need to value our spiritual inheritance. It needs to be very, very important to us to transfer that inheritance to the next generation and for ourselves to seek the kingdom of God first and above all. Um, if we do that, if that in spiritual inheritance is so important to us as it was to our Lord Jesus Christ, then we will be willing to submit to the discipline of the Father and to, um, to put to death our carnal cravings for this world and also to renew our minds so that we may have the mind of Christ and so that we have a spiritual inheritance to transfer to our children. So we see how important valuing the um, spiritual inheritance is. It is absolutely key. A man or a woman that does not value their spiritual inheritance will not be able to transfer it to the next generation. And then the generations will weaken uh, until the time comes when they are spiritually so famished that they will despise their birthright and that they will easily give it up for um, something that is worthless.